It's hard to believe the Boston Celtics have maintained the best record in the league without the best defensive center in basketball, Robert Williams. Boston's also been without Malcolm Brogdon now for the last three games. Even in a rough shooting night for Jason Tatum, he put up an incredibly rare stat line against SGA's Thunder. That said, Jalen Brown doesn't get nearly enough credit from fans and media for being one of the best shooting guards on the planet. Likewise, reigning DPOI Marcus Smart is only thought of as some dirty player, which is neither here nor there, but that reputation is definitely the reason why we rarely talk about Smart's underrated offensive game. Taking into account their talent 1-15, through 15, Boston staying mentally composed in terms of taking care of the basketball and maintaining a sharp, genuine edge can make them extremely tough to beat. Whether or not this team will get over themselves mentally and put their money where their mouths are come the postseason is another story. All I'm saying is, if they're trusting each other as opposed to constantly playing hero ball, it's clear the currently first-seeded Celtics are capable of getting back to the finals. Despite the Time Lord's absence, here's why the Boston Celtics are currently malicious, albeit just 14 games in. Right quick, just 7.9% of you watching are subscribed, so if even a quarter of you were, that'd be dope. Splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and if you have Instagram, I post NBA mixtapes on there, which I'm getting better at producing, so be sure to follow at Hoops for NBA edits. Back to the content. Marcus Smart's one of those players who you despise if he's not on your team, and can't help but love if he is. Celtic fans admire him for his all-out grit and grind hustle, Warrior fans hate him because of his reckless dive for a loose ball, which injured Stephen Curry. While Steve Kerr had an emotional reaction to Smart's dive, and rightfully so, in defense of his best player, both Draymond and Steph said that Smart's dive wasn't a dirty play. Here's what reigning finals MVP Stephen Curry had to say about Smart injuring him a few days after it happened. Yeah, I, he didn't try to hurt me. There's you know, a certain way that he plays that... Um, I don't think many other people would have made the play that he did, but I don't think it was, you know, malicious or dirty or trying to hurt me. Um, it's kind of just a, a tough situation. Like I said, just the way that he plays, you know, there's a conversation just around should he or shouldn't he have, but it wasn't like he looked at me and was like, I'm trying to hurt that dude, so yeah, it's basketball. Steph's a class act for that take considering he was forced to miss the rest of the regular season after that play. Curry would use that play from Smart as motivation to come back and dominate 2022's playoffs, including the Celtics. But going back to Marcus Smart, and whether or not you love or hate his aggressive playing style, there's no denying that he provides an undervalued impact in more areas than simply just his hustle and defense. As we witnessed when Marcus scored 20 of his 22 points in the second half, including the game ceiling take to the bucket to help the C's claw back against a rising OKC team that's better than most people think, this man's capable of being a timely bucket getter. Currently leading Boston in assists per game, the big improvement with Smart so far this season has come in the assist to turnover ratio department. Since becoming 2014's number 6 overall pick eight and a half years ago prior to this season, Smart had never ranked higher than number 36 league-wide in assist-to-turnover ratio, and while a lot could change, this year he's 15th best among all players in that category. So in other words, Marcus is taking care of the rock better than he's ever been in his pro career. Smart hasn't been good on spot-up three-pointers, making just 25.9% of catch-and-shoot attempts. However, on pull-up jumpers is where he's thrived this year, as on off-the-dribble threes, Smart's making a shocking 35.3% of 1.2 triples attempted per game. Mind you, those percentages should even out, as Smart's been historically a better spot-up shooter than he is a pull-up shooter, but only time will tell. Best part about Marcus offensively though, aside from his focused playmaking of course, is this man's post scoring. He ranks just number 49 among all players in points per game from the post, which actually isn't bad for a point guard and puts him just ahead of SGA, but it's Marcus's efficiency from the post that makes him elite in this facet. He's making 63.6% .6 of his shots from the post thus far, which puts him in the 84th percentile among all players. Smart taking care of the basketball, not playing hero ball, and knowing who the top options are is what's most important for him. One of those go-to options is the product of California, Jalen Brown. 
haven't just turned 26 years of age. For whatever reason, fans don't consider that Brown is still an improving player. I think we collectively expect more from Brown due to the fact that it's his seventh year in the league already and is going through his fourth consecutive campaign of averaging at least 20 points per game. We forget that he's only just entering the prime of his career, that is, if he's even reached his prime yet. It certainly looked that way up to this point though, as Brown's averaging career highs across the board in points at 25.4, dimes at 3.5, and boards at 6.8. He's also shooting just under his highest percentage from the field at 48.2%. But maybe the biggest improvement we have to give credit to Jalen for is this man's vastly improved foul shooting. Again, it goes without saying that a lot could change, but up until this season, Brown had never made more than 76.4% of his foul shots, whereas this year, he's making 83.1% of them. He's always been capable of developing into a LeBron and Kawhi hybrid with his locomotive athleticism, polished shot creation, and clamping perimeter defense. Now it seems like Jalen's IQ, mental fortitude, and poise are catching up to his naturally gifted and skilled on-court abilities. In Game 6 of 2022's Finals, we can't forget that Jalen scored 34 points on 66.7% true shooting. But I want to evaluate how Brown looks in 22-23 so far after his summer grind following the Finals loss. Let's go back to his season high up to this point of 35 points which came on opening night against Philly. First possession of the year for the opposing Sixers sees Brown blitz and strongly contest a man who just dropped 59 points in a game in Embiid. The best duo in the NBA has a second sense for one another, even on the glass. As Tatum pokes it away from Tucker, Brown's fully aware of long shot, long rebound, runs down the board, and gallops around Maxi and Harden to complete this coast to coast. This time it's Vonley snagging the board, Brown turns on the Jets to catch Philly sleeping, and credit TNT for the poorly timed audio visual. Bounce. Working his way into the lane, Brown legally fends off the pressing up Tobias Harris, stops on a dime while using his left pivot as leverage to get solid elevation for a nice little midi with the bank open. Jalen's decisiveness directly after crossing half court and using the patented big body from Noah Vonley allows him to quickly step into this shifty pull up. Tobias Harris isn't the greatest wing stopper, but he's also not the worst, and despite Harris having the size advantage over Jalen, Boston's assassin wasn't phased. In a DHO with B G, Tobias plays outstanding defense, but credit to the refs for not calling this a travel because Brown holds that right pivot foot the entire time and twirls around for a move that biased defenders always think is a walk. A lot more reputable of a stopper in PJ Tucker forces Brown to fumble his handle, and JB's taken a ton of flack for that handle, but Brown quickly collects it, breaks PJ's ankles with a seemingly wild high dribble between the legs cross, then avoids the help of Montrez Harrell, and leans back over Tucker for the float game. This man may lose the dribble at times, but there's no denying Brown knows how to snap some ankles. This semi-transition ISO sees JB go in and out move behind the back cross and off-handed Hezzy and also left-handed finish to send Tobias to the floor. Can't blame Tobias, JB's polished finishing with both hands paired with his hops make him very tough to gauge. What's the best weapon in Jalen Brown's bag? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out and the top 5 commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's speaks winner is Ozzy Baller who says as a Warriors fan I'm concerned about this new Celtics team. They're serious contenders now while also being young enough to contend in the future. Even if Boston doesn't win it all this year I wouldn't be surprised if they make it to back to back finals. Jason Tatum looks like a top 5 player in the league providing great defense and absurd offense. Their depth cannot be overlooked, providing quality scoring and defense when the starters are on the bench. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.